Good morning, folks. Nine days after first warning of major storms coming at the U.S. East Coast and the West Pacific, multiple deaths are confirmed in both locations and we await final reports. And it's been nine days since I spotted the well-defined glowing plasma structure on the sun. In my first video, I made the claim that the government shut down the solar observatory in New Mexico because of these plasma structures. Well, now they've shut down six more solar observatories. All right, let's do this thing. Solar observatories worldwide are shutting down and we are losing the ability to watch the sun. Except, of course, for the SDO satellite, the number one way. Real-time data in both video and image format for all their wavelengths is still working, including their composites. And, okay, sure. The second most important one, Soho, that's still up as well, showing on time and updated images of the inner heliosphere. And okay, yes, I know, GOES SXI is still up and running, and although no useful scopes existed at the New Mexico station that did get shut down, the others of the NSO are still up and running. This is Hawaii here, California, Spain, Australia, Japan, both the radio and microwave images are working, and okay, yes, yes, the Proba 2 swap is still delivering images perfectly, and... Okay, yes, so is the ESA's CESAR device and the others in Hawaii. Sorry, I forgot about those earlier. Despite all of that, seriously, I think it's obvious, isn't it? They're hiding the sun. They don't want us to have any way to see it, and they are shutting down our visibility of it worldwide. This is very, very bad news. They obviously have completely hidden the sun from us, and we now have no way of keeping an eye out. I'll see you tomorrow for the full space weather update. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Now let's take another look at the plasma structures. If you imagine the equator of the sun splitting the disk in half, you can see that the first plasma structure was a little north of the equator, and the second one was a little south of the equator, and now the third one is a little north of the equator again. Now we know that the either side of that equator are opposite poles, so well, what that means is we have a magnetic connection now between the north and the south and then back to the north again. And I suspect that in a few more days when we see the next plasma structure come around and form, we'll see that it's south again. And that'll continue until it makes a complete circuit around the sun back to the very first defined one. The big question is, what's going to happen when that plasma ring completes? This is much more than a pretty picture. It's a place where the dynamics allow researchers to discover that magnetic fields and the magnetic waves are a better fit than gravitational collapse for the large-scale structure. When you think of gravitational collapse, you think of suns going supernova. But you see, they got the model wrong. And they don't want us to find out that they're wrong. The stellar wind electric fields combined with the magnetic fields were able to create action in gas regions much farther away than they had imagined, whereby the magnetic waves are outrunning the field current and are able to cause the effects that used to be attributed to gravitational collapse. If heated, this revelation could kickstart a cosmic revolution. Ben is absolutely right. Now I want to show you a plasma experiment in the lab. EU theory is concerned very much with producing tangible evidence that the things about which it speaks are indeed true and verifiable. This was a simulated sun experiment from the Sapphire Project. Notice the bright glowing spots in the photo. If that was an actual natural sun, those spots would be evenly spaced all over the globe. I believe that's what's happening to our sun. In the EU model of the Sun, the Sun's photosphere acts as an anode and will continue to do so for as long as it maintains a sufficiently positive potential difference to the plasma of the heliosphere from which it collects negative electrons and to which it discharges positive ions. Here's where the connections between the Sun and the planets come in because the coronal holes on the Sun make magnetic connections to the planets, like Earth. The magnetic field-aligned currents, called Birkeland currents, that sustain this positive potential are generated by the great plasma engine of the universe. The Sun is empowered from outside itself, as are the stars in general. And as Dr. Scott points out, there is no telling when or for how long the Sun or any other particular star will be sustained. 
So you see, the sun is not eternal. It goes through periodic changes, like the one we're going to see here soon. Now this is a chart of the three plasma states. Now the Earth is usually in the state to the far left where it's dark current mode and you can't see the plasma. Well, now the Earth is charging up and uh, because the magnetic fields are getting weaker and the sun is going through changes and so now we're starting to see glow mode on the earth and as all this progresses we'll get to the point where we'll see more arc mode on the earth and that's where the earth will really reset its magnetic fields again all right here's a picture of a plasma structure that formed up north where you can see the plasma easier and next to it you can see a similar petroglyph in Chaco Canyon and if I had time in this I would go into why that is shown in Chaco Canyon but for now just know that these things and have happened before here's an example of the new plasma arcs that are being spotted today here's a shot of the plasma discharge arc discharge from outer space and notice that both ends of the discharge are from the earth Here's a picture of a smaller arc discharge. Uh, you can see the two points uh, that connect the Earth, the, both poles, you know, the blue and the red, typical plasma colors we see here. Notice that both poles are near water again, just like the California wildfires that I covered. Here you can see a complete arc end to end on the Earth next to a lake again. Well, that's it for this video, folks. I'll see you next time. I hope YouTube is starting to censor me, so it'd be nice if I had a little support and people would share my videos. I work totally by myself, folks, and I don't use social media. I don't have time to, and I don't want to. I need a little help. Thanks.